In this video, I will show you how to calculate the maximum drawdown in Excel using two examples. First, we're going to calculate the maximum drawdown for GameStop using a series of daily prices. In the second example, I'm going to show you how to calculate the maximum drawdown for a portfolio where we don't have a series of prices, but we have series of returns. So let's see how it's done. The maximum drawdown measures the maximum fall in value for an asset over a certain period of time and is calculated as the ratio of its lowest point or lowest trough divided by its highest point or highest peak, minus one. Maybe this sounds complicated, but it's not, I promise. Let's see it graphically. In this chart of the Standard & Poor's 500 that runs from the beginning of 2020 to today, you can see that the higher peak was reached on the 19th of February 2020 at a price of 6,886 while the lowest point is on the 23rd of March 2020 at 4,559. If we take this value, 4,559, divided by the peak, which is 6,886, and subtract 1, we'll see that the maximum drawdown is minus 34%. So how do we calculate it? Let's see with example number one. First thing I'll do is to download the series of daily prices from Yahoo Finance. So I'll type GME and go to historical, and then click on download. By default, this gives me daily prices for the last year. In this Excel spreadsheet, I will get rid of the data I don't need so that I just have the date and the close price adjusted for dividends. Let me plot a graph to show you what we're trying to calculate so that you can get the intuition first. Select these two columns with the dates and prices. Click on the Insert tab at the top and then on the 2D line doodle. From here, select the first line chart. As you can see, this stock has been a wide ride last year and it's clear that the maximum drawdown happened somewhere in February of this year when it dropped from a price of around $350 all the way down to $40. This is definitely the biggest fall in value over this time period. So now what we will do is to build a formula that will automatically calculate that drop in value for us. Go to C1 and name this column drawdown. In cell C2, I start by writing the min function. I write min and then open parentheses and then starting from the second observation in my sample, so from the second price in my series, I will select all the data I have making sure that I leave the first price outside. Using the F4 key, I will lock in place the cell with the last observed price, which in my case is B254. Now I can close the parentheses and use the slash sign to divide this quantity by the first observed price, which is in cell B2. Last thing to do now, subtract one from this. This will give you minus 11% as a result. What is this number? This formula, found the smallest price in column B and compared that to the very first observation, which is $4.3. And it tells me that the lowest price observed from the 29th of May onwards is 11% smaller than the initial price of $4.3. And this is very true because even if you can't really see it from the graph because the scale is too wide, GameStop had a price of $3.85 towards the end of July 2020. $3.85 is exactly 11% lower than the initial price of 4.3. Now, the beauty of this formula set up in this way and with the correct cells locked is that it can be dragged down very easily. Just double click on the lower right corner when you see a thin black cross. So now we have a series of drawdowns with a dynamic start date. If you click on C3, you will see that the initial price is not 4.3 anymore but is now 406 and so on. Since I locked the last cell, which is B254, my dataset will not shift down when I drag my formula. Now we need one last step to find the maximum drawdown. I will type in cell D1 maximum drawdown and I will calculate it in cell D2. This will just be the min function applied to the data in column C because in column C I have all these losses in value and I want to pick the biggest one. 
but the biggest drawdown in this context is the lowest number because we are dealing with negative figures. So that's why we're going to use the mean formula rather than the max. You will find that the maximum loss in value is 88%, which is this big drop here in February 2021, which happened because of speculative behaviors on the market and short selling. I did make a video on that. I will link that in the description box below. So now we know how to find the maximum drawdown for stocks and indices, but how do we find it for a portfolio where we don't have prices, but we have a series of returns? The procedure is very similar. I'm going to show you how it's done in a second. The only extra step that we have to take is to calculate cumulative returns first. In this spreadsheet, I have monthly returns for a multi-asset portfolio going back to 2017. Let's try to plot this. As you can see, this chart doesn't make much sense and it's pretty difficult to calculate the maximum drawdown from here. So what we have to do is to calculate cumulative returns. In cell C1, I will put the header of the series and then in cell C2, I will type the first value. This can be any discrete number you want, but I usually use 100. Now we will capitalize this initial 100 using our monthly returns. And to do that, I will go to cell C3 and I put the equal sign, then I reference the initial amount in cell C2. I then multiply this with the asterisk by a factor equal to one plus the monthly returns for January 2017. This will give me 100.4, and it means that if I started with 100 pounds in December 16, I would have made 40p returns for the month of January. I can drag the formula down and voila, I already have the series of cumulative returns. What we're doing here is creating an index starting from a series of simple monthly returns. If you do that and you plot the cumulative returns, you will see that it'd be much, much easier to find the maximum drawdown now. Now let's proceed as we did before by calculating a series of drawdowns first. So I'm gonna use the mean function using as argument our cumulative returns, but starting from the second observation, remember to lock the last cell in the data set using the dollar sign, and then divide this quantity by the first observation and subtract one. Now, if you drag this formula like we did before, you'll find yourself with a series of drawdowns with different starting points. The minimum or the lowest value in this series is the maximum drawdown. It is 12%, and is this drawdown here you can see in the chart happening in March 2020 when there was a market sell-off triggered by the pandemic. So now you know how to find the maximum drawdown for stocks, indices and for portfolios. Maximum drawdowns are very useful in risk management of portfolios. So I hope that you found this video useful. I thank you so much for watching this far. I'll see you in the next one.